Hi everyone, it's Kate Stoltz. Um, thank you for joining today. So I wanted to bring up the subject of why am I on YouTube talking about my Amish upbringing when I left 10 years ago, you know, and um, I saw a comment on Twitter being like, she left the Amish, like why is she talking about Amish people? And uh, so I wanted to address that because it's an important question. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm talking about the Amish people on YouTube right now and why I'm talking about my upbringing is because I've been wanting to do this for years. I feel like I had a lot of opportunities to tell my story, but it was never on a platform that I controlled. Um, I was able to, I had the opportunity to share my stories with uh, a lot of reporters and journalists and on shows and things of that nature, but I was never the one to make the final edit. Um, th there were many instances where I would sit down for an interview with a journalist and we would have a conversation uh, that would last about an hour to two hours. And this conversation often got condensed down into five minutes. So there was a lot of context that I feel like was very important uh, that got left out of the interview. And since I didn't have the control of being able to say, okay, well, this is really important context to help the people understand what I'm trying to say. Um, I think it led to a lot of people kind of misunderstanding what I was saying. Um, and you know, in addition to that, there there are some things that I've always wanted to address and that I constantly would bring up in interviews, but nobody realized the importance or understood how important I thought it was. So the reason I love YouTube is because I can give context on here and nobody's going to cut it out. Uh, so I love that about that. Um, another thing that I always wanted to address is something that I experienced as a child, uh, which was stereotypes and discrimination. And I'm not here to kind of be woke or to call people out, um, but I am here to, well, I'm here to call out a certain group of people, and that's the people that understand the effects of anti-discrimination and talk about it from the rooftop and then turn around and discriminate Amish people. I'm here to call those people out. But for the most part, I think it's important that we talk about stereotypes and discrimination in a context of just having a conversation. You know, instead of what I don't want to do is go out and guns blazing and being like, this is bad. Um, you need to stop this or else. I think it's important to when people misunderstand a culture or appropriate a culture, which I saw, I kind of did a short video last week of this uh, singer that was appropriating the Amish culture. Um, and I just said, hey, like, you know, you're not Amish. Why are you pretending to have an Amish background? Like, it's not cool. Um, but I think the reason why I, the reason I want to bring this up is because when I was, I would say in the beginning of talking about my experiences, when I, I was living in New York City, I was very immersed in the entertainment industry and um, the fashion industry. I was going to FIT for a uh, fashion school. And I met a lot of really incredible people. Um, and it was a wonderful time of my life where I was first starting to understand the importance of inclusion and diversity and, you know, all of those things that, uh, you know, and, you know, th those are buzzwords, but I think what it boils down to is just seeing other people for who they are instead of seeing people for, you know, how much money they have or, you know, the color of their skin or their religious background or, you know, all of the things that are kind of irrelevant when it comes to are you a good person or are you a bad person? I don't think anybody's like necessarily black and white, um, but it was it was during that time that I probably experienced the most uh, flagrant examples of people just disrespecting 
uh, my culture. And it was just kind of like a weird, uh, it was a weird experience of seeing the very people that would go out and march against the things that they were doing to me. Um, and I, I get why they did it. It's something that we don't really hear about, you know, a show comes out about uh, the Amish people that is incredibly degrading to the culture and takes a story of several individuals and paints it the whole community that way. Um, and nobody speaks up about it. And I say something and nobody understands what I'm talking about. When it happens to other cultures that speak up about these issues a lot more, people understand what they're saying and why it's important. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not speaking up because I want to uh, fan the flames or anything like that, but I think the most important context that I want to kind of bring forward, bring to the table, the context that I feel like was left out in a lot of the stories that I told was that I was only telling my side of the story. I was only giving my perspective. And even my perspective has changed a lot since I left. I left when I was 21 years old. Um, I've been living in normal society for 10 years. And that time has really given me a lot of perspective that I didn't have as a 21 year old. So when I look back at the way that I conducted myself and the way that I kind of um, positioned myself and the thought process, it was the thought process of a 21 year old that was ready to go out and kind of find myself in the world, find out who I was. Um, and it was a valid perspective, but it's very different from, it wasn't a well-rounded one. It was, it was one of a young 21 year old, which there's nothing wrong with that perspective. But 10 years later, I look back and I'm like, there's so many things that I could have represented a little bit more. And, you know, I, I don't think I was, well, I know I wasn't ready for the weight of being seen as a representative for a religious culture. That's not something that a 21 year old is ever necessarily should have. <laughs> you know, I just, I wasn't smart enough or educated enough. I was like, I didn't have the perspective to do that in a fair way. And um, my only hope is that in 10 years, I look back to what I'm saying today and feel the same embarrassment that I did, uh, that I do when I look back 10 years ago, because if I don't feel that embarrassment, well, it means that I'm not learning. It means that I'm not growing. So, um, I mean, basically, you know, the reason why I'm speaking up on YouTube and just kind of like, hey, this is, you know, just trying to give a little bit more context is because I think it's important. And also because I see a lot of, um, you know, back to my earlier point about, you know, this isn't me trying to be woke or trying to like play into those buzzwords. I think the reason why I use those words is because I have seen so many times where people that are for that just don't understand that the Amish people need to be included in that as well. In the idea of we're individuals and we represent ourselves. Um, there's a big difference between you know, and I think all of us want to be seen for who we are, not as, you know, just because we live on the same street as somebody doesn't mean that we're the same as they are. You know, our neighbor is a crazy person and uh, we don't want to be seen as a crazy person because we're ourselves. And the same applies to, you know, same applies to religion as well. So that's something that I feel like is incredibly important and something that I, you know, I, that I dealt with as a child growing up within the Amish community and kind of hearing comments uh, from outsiders that didn't really understand that, you know, we're individuals and kind of, I'll get into that more a little bit later, but I wanted to just address the reason why I'm speaking up 10 years later. Like why, you know, I, I, I'm not currently Amish. Why am I talking about the Amish? Well, it's because I feel like I have unfinished business. Like I, I feel like, 
there are things that I need to further explain, give a little bit more context, uh, a little bit more perspective, and above all, just kind of advocate for, well, two things. The idea that it's important to learn from each other instead of point fingers. And, um, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of cancel culture. I'm a fan of education. I'm a fan of listening to people with open hearts and open minds. And uh, I think that's a really interesting experience that I think uh, we can all benefit from. And then, uh, you know, that, I, I think that's a main point. But that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'll get into more later. Uh, I just wanted to kind of iron that out for a little bit. But I'll see you guys later. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to know more. And if you want to keep up to date with what I'm going to be talking about. All right, bye.